Guess what time it is? It's time for another Scrawler Box mashup. So, I thought that it would be fun to do another one of these. I had a good time with the first one, so I'm going to grab our random number generator. And I have eight boxes here. So we'll do one to eight. And it is box two. Again, we did box two last time. And box eight. All right. So I'm going to just count. I'm going to start on the right because, well, no particular reason other than I'm right-handed. So box one, box two is this one. And then three, four, five, six, seven, eight is the bottom one on this stack. All right. Let's see. These are our two boxes. And the what I wrote on the top of them, November and September 2018, is the number, I think, is the month that it's postmarked. Uh, they may not correspond to whatever month is inside the actual box. So, let's open them up. Ooh. It's all black. Oh, you know, if I did get this one in September, then it would have been, I would have actually received it in Inktober. That's probably what this says. This is probably an Inktober theme box. Okay, so the candy is a blackjack, which I have no idea what that is, but okay. And this was the artist featured that month. That's cool, I like that. I don't do animals very well, other than birds. I like to do birds, but actual animals I don't have much experience with. So here is all of the artist's information. And yeah, I really like that. That's cool. All right, Scrawler Box sticker on theme. And the challenge for the month is Jazz Noir. I almost read that as Jazza. <laughs> Jazza Noir. Anyway, um, oh boy. All kinds of black ink things. All right. Editing 2200C permanent marker with a chisel tip. I got, oh, another Artline Six brush pen. I like these for hand lettering, so that's cool. Glad to have that. A Zebra Sarasa Porous Pen. A Stabilo Pen 68. I have another one of these in lime green I was using in, during this month in uh, March. So that's cool. I like it. Sakura Pigma BB. BB, what does that mean? Big brush is, oh yeah, I guess it does mean big brush, whoa. <laughs> All right, uh, what is this? A Derwent graphic line marker. A Centra, a CD, DVD, BD pen. Is this a pen for writing on CDs? Yeah, alcohol-based marker was created for labeling CDs. Huh, all right. It's alcohol-based, I like that. And then a Pentel Arts color brush. I like these, they look like the ones I got out of Sketchbox, and I really like those ones. Um, and you can't buy them individually, which drives me crazy because I really would like more of them. But this is cool, I wonder if this comes, I wonder if these come in different colors. Well, anyway, we got black. <laughs> and then the paper, the paper is Canaletto Vellino A5 paper. It's nice and smooth. I like it. Good marker paper. All right. So that is everything for the sep. I'm assuming it's September 2018. It is yes, September box number 37 from September. Okay. So let me just move these to the side. 
Ooh, we see all kinds of things. Oh boy. Oh no, please don't tell me they want me to draw hands. I hate, oh, look it. Ooh, a little Loistrum. Oh, this is what I use for my, I've been using for my bullet journal this year, a little Loistrum. It's a jot book, a Loistrum 1917 jot book. I like it. Anyway, okay, calm down. This is all oh God. It's all, it looks like it's gonna be colored pencils and anatomy. I hate one of those things and I'm tentative friends with the other thing. <laughs> Here's the artist's information. She is um, much, much better at anatomy than I am. Um, yeah, so, all right. So we have this Loistrom 1917 journal. I'm just gonna put that image for the month there and let us see what supplies we have. There's a lot in here. It's a, it's a very hefty little bag. Oh, first the candy. A melody pop. Oh, this one's a, like a whistle and you can you can blow them like oh god that sounds bad That's not what I meant. Uh, okay. We're just gonna put that down And we have a sticker. Oh, it's all scribbly Is there a ballpoint pen in the oh my god, these are ballpoint pens. What? What in the world? All right, um, sure Let's see um Loistrom Jot Book Medium A5. The one in the picture is purple. This one's gray covered. I, I kind of prefer the purple one, but I mean, whatever. It's just the same book, just different color. Um, we have a Helix Oxford Ballpoint Pen in black. Oh, that's cool. I like the clip. It's like a double clip. It's like split. Oh, that's cool. I like that. I have a Koei Noir eraser pencil. What? I gotta, f what is this? Where is it? I gotta, f what, which one is it? I don't know. The white one? This one. Koei Noir Hartmuth. I'm assuming this is the eraser pencil. Let me see, does it flat? Oh yeah, look at that. Oh boy, watch that flex. Oh, they gave me a whole eraser, wow instead of just one attached to a pencil even. Like not only is there an eraser, wow. Uh, I got a Koei Noir 1860 graphite pencil in 2B. <clears throat> I got a Koei Noir paper stump blender. These I, I kind of hate actually, they're kind of the bane of my existence, but Unless I have some Gamzol, in which case then everything's fine, but. I got three Stetler Ergo Soft 157 pencils in blue, pink, and purple. These are cool, I like the Stetler things because they're triangular shaped. They have flat sides so they don't roll all over the place, which is great. And then I also got three Bic Crystal Fun Point Ballpoint pens in the same colors, so the blue, pink, and purple. Pentel Hybrid DX White Gel Pen, which ironically I just purchased one of these for my white stuff review comparison thingy that I'm doing. Um, and by the way, stay tuned for a white stuff review and comparison thingy that I'm working on. A Koei Noir Jumbo Graphite Stick. Oh, that's kind of cool. But why do I have this pencil and this graphite stick? Well, whatever. Hmm. You know, I was recently watching... Who was I watching? Who did this? Someone did. Not this box, but another monthly box where you received like a sketchbook or a journal and she filled out the whole thing. Who was that? That wasn't drawing with waffles. Oh, it was Casey Golden. It was Casey Golden. I was watching Casey Golden. Right, that's right. I was watching Casey Golden and she did a video where she opened a box that had a sketchbook in it and she filled out the whole thing. She said it took her the course of a weekend. Huh. 
huh, well, maybe I'll fill this whole thing out. That's kind of, I liked that idea. It was cool seeing what she came up with to do. Okay, so body parts. I'm, I'm having an idea. So what if we, for each page, uh, maybe choose a different body part? And then I will do an illustration focusing on that body part. And we'll try and keep the theme sort of jazz noir. I'm not really even sure what that means, but maybe something jazz makes you think of like the 20s and that era. And noir makes you think of like film noir, which was like the, what, 30s and 40s, I guess. That detective noir, gritty, dark style. So yeah, okay, I can work with this. Um, let's see how it goes. I can, you know, spend a weekend working on a book. I will uh, check back in with you when it's all done. And we'll see what I've come up with, because I have no idea. This was a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> this took me a month to finish with all these supplies. Uh, definitely of all these, the MVP was this one. I love this brush pen. You can make such cool brush textures, but you can make really fine lines. I definitely used the crap out of this one. There's like no ink left. You really, I really have to squeeze this to get anything else out of it. Um, and also this, um, I ended up having to add my own eraser because this is what's left of the eraser. Um, I also added my own pencil sharpener because I needed it. Otherwise I was not gonna get 30 pictures out. But yeah, so this this one was weird. I, I still don't know how I feel about sharpenable erasers. But anyway, let's, let's get into the main event. So, for Jazzy Noir body parts, I basically went through and chose, well first, okay, so I, you see I wrote, I put the stickers on the front, I wrote Jazzy Noir body parts, then on the inside I put the two challenges, Jazzy Noir and body parts, and then I went through and I chose 30 body parts because there were 30 pages. And on every page is a different body part. And I tried to do a sort of noir theme or a jazz theme. I kind of did both. I kind of picked one or the other. By the end, I was kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel for inspiration. Um, but everything in here pretty much has like an either anywhere between like the 1920s for the jazz up to like the 1940s for like detective film noir. That's like the kind of decades it made me think of. So anytime in there is what most of these pictures have to do with. So starting off with ear, this is a relatively known picture of uh, Billie Holiday I kind of tried to reproduce in that black and white for jazz. Um, because, and that's the other thing I tried to do is for each body part, I tried to make sure that it was in the middle of the page or uh, close to the middle of the page or like a focal point. So I know this looks like mouth should be this one, but it's actually, it's ear. So uh, this was the first one, ear. Next is hand. I love these little, um, cigarette holders. I think they're super cool. So I, I definitely am excited that I, I used a lot of these because I really like these. I think they're like very aesthetically pleasing and pearls, lots of pearls. And of course my only color scheme was blue, purple, and pink because it's the only colors I had. So, uh, navel. This is a 1940s bathing suit I looked up. However, it's not exactly accurate because I definitely, I made it a little bit more low cut so you could really see the navel because that's the focus of the picture. But it's the only thing I could think of from like the era that would like kind of show off. 
So it doesn't have much to do with jazz or parties or the 20s or the 40s or, you know, other than it's a bathing suit style. It was even this kind of like tealy color, tealy blue green color, but it was more high cut. It was like up to here more so than like where I drew it at, but this was one of the last pictures I did. I did these totally out of order. <laughs> And this was the last, one of the last ones I did and I just didn't know what to do for it. So anyway, uh, after that is calf. And uh, again, I kind of put his calf in the middle of the page or tried to. It's um, a guy playing a saxophone. It's very hard to tell, I'm sure. Again, this is one of the last ones I did when I was scraping the bottom of the barrel for inspiration. But um, He's got a little hat here people have been throwing money into because apparently he's a pretty good saxophone player. I guess. Okay, after that is Elbow. Again, Elbow in the very middle of the page. She's super stylized with her like hat and big feather and I looked up a 40s style dress. 40s? 20s. 20s style dress this is. Long dress with a, with a ruffle and a purse. I don't know, these were, I, th you're gonna see a lot of different styles because like I said, it was, I didn't have a whole lot of inspiration, so it was a little, it was a little touch and go at times. This next one is nose and it is, uh, well, I'll just show it to you. It's, um, it's not great. So, um, I tried to go with like detective film noir style and uh, yeah, it just got worse and worse. He originally wasn't going to have a beard, he was just gonna have a mustache, but then the black ink on the bottom of his face when I tried to shade was a train wreck, so I turned it into a beard and it just, this one had problems, I'm sure you can tell. And probably the worst part of the picture, ironically, is the, uh, the part that's supposed to be the focus, the nose, it's a terrible nose. I can't, like, let's just move on. Tongue. Here is one of the of three fan arts in this entire thing. Uh, this was again one of the approaching last um, images. I was running out of ideas. I didn't know what to do, and the only thing I could think of for tongue was his ridiculous tongue. So I just drew it. I said screw it and drew it. It has nothing to do with jazz or noir or anything like that. I just drew them <laughs> because tongue. After that is toes. And I actually kind of like this one. I've got a couple with this like sort of gradient background from blue to purple to pink. And I actually really like how that makes the piece look. It makes it look kind of like finished almost. But yeah, so toes. I didn't really care about the picture when I was doing it, but once I added that background, I really like this background. I did it a couple of times throughout. But yeah, so these are toes. This is a, I looked it up, this is like a 1920s kind of style of shoe, I guess. So it's supposed to be like maybe dancing. And then after toes, we've got ankle. This is also one of the last ones I did. Um, it's dark and muddy and you can't really see much other than his socks are pink. Um, originally I was going to draw like somebody was like pulling up their pants, like the pant legs. But, um, so you could see like they were almost like they were showing off their pink socks. But then I forgot and then I scribbled in the background with that really cool brush pen that I used the crap out of and was my MVP. And yeah, so then I remembered, oh yeah, I was supposed to do that thing and I didn't do that thing. But yeah, so ankles. After that, we got Belly, which again, not super connected to noir, but a cool silhouette. So also not super connected to jazz, other than I put these, the music because I had nothing else to do. And next I have a speed paint for you.
So yeah, this was the very, very, very last one I did of the whole sketchbook. It is chest, and it's sort of like focusing in on his chest, a singer, obviously. At least I hope it's obvious, because if it's not, then, you know, that's probably a problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, I used minimal coloring and shading, but... I didn't really think it needed it. All right, after that, um, what is this, wrist? Oh yeah, so I screwed this one up. I originally thought for this one that I was doing waist, not wrist. <laughs> and then I looked at the word after I was done, you know, with most of it and was like, oh my God, this is supposed to be wrist, crap. It still worked out, but I definitely was going for like a sharp waist and it really was supposed to be the wrist. So here's our first like real flapper. Well, flapper, I'm sure this is like stereotypical flapper and not like authentic flapper, but she's got the big floofy feathers and all the pearls. I like this one. And this one I did was one of the first ones I did. So it's got a hibiscus because it was in the beginning of the month when I still had some Hawaii on the brain. So a little Easter egg here. <laughs> But yeah, this one's wrist, so you'll see the the background's trying to point your eye toward her wrist. Because originally it was going to be pointing you towards her waist, but then it wasn't waist, it was wrist. Waist is later <laughs> in this sketchbook, so yeah. Alright, anyway, um, next is the, ne the second fan art that I have in this. Um, it's mouth, because all I can think of with the color palette I had... This was also one of the very first ones I drew, was of a Jigglypuff singing. So it still has to do with music. She doesn't really sing like jazz necessarily, but you know, that super big open mouth, all I could think of was, well, Jigglypuff and Kirby was the other thing I thought of, but Jigglypuff was slightly more topical. So we went with that. Uh, next, I believe was Adam's apple. Yeah. So there's that. This one took me a long time to figure out what to draw because I don't know. It looks like maybe he's not singing. Maybe anyway, so we're just going to move on, move on from it. This is Adam's apple. He has a large pronounced Adam's apple. So we're just going to, it, it, it came, this came from the thought of, I, I've heard this is a thing singing from your Adam's apple. If you're a guy, I don't know if that's true or a thing, or what precisely, but yeah, Adam's apple. Oh, next is feet. So all I could think of for feet were those, I don't know if they are, I don't know if they're actually old timey or if I just think they are, but those mats that like taught you how to dance, like showed you where the steps were to move your feet and where like your feet would be and your partner's feet would be. Has anyone ever seen those before? Do we do we know what I'm talking about? Because that's what this is. It's like two people trying to learn a dance because, you know, jazz music, dancing, it's all a thing. Um, and I don't... All I could think of for, for feet was, was like this chaotic shuffle of movements dancing to like jazz music. So that's what we got. And then after that, <laughs> this one I definitely kept thinking to myself while I was drawing it. Why did I choose this body part? Like I just made a random list of body parts and why did I write this? Because I, was, I knew I was going to have to eventually draw something to represent this. And uh, yeah, so next we have groin. And all I could think of was man spreading. So here's a gentleman who is taking up space. And these two black kind of blob things on his legs are supposed to be a uh, lady sitting on his lap. So um, maybe they want a piece of that groin. Okay, moving on. Okay, going to stop right there. Uh, next is I. It is uh, film noir-ish style. It's a, it's a screen cap from some film noir that I tried to reproduce. And we're not going to talk about how her lips look like they're falling off of her face or how her eyes are uneven, or anything else. This one's terrible, and we're gonna move on to the other speed paint I have for you. 
This was one of the first ones that I did for this sketchbook. It is also the third and final fan art that we have. This is Jessica Rabbit. Because we all know how much I love Jessica Rabbit and the prompt word was thigh. And all I could think of was that super high slit she has in her dress. Yes. <laughs> I, um, I have a watercolor I did of Jessica Rabbit. I don't think I did a speed paint of it though on this channel. But I do have a watercolor that I did do of Jessica Rabbit. I do enjoy Jessica Rabbit. She's one of my favorites. But she made me think, she I mean, she's like a lounge singer kind of thing. Made me think of, made me think of her. I thought she was appropriate for the, for the jazz noir sort of aesthetic. Uh, next we have Fingers. And this was the first one I did for this entire book. This was the very first illustration I did when I started. So I had a coworker that was flipping through this because he wanted to see it. And when he got to this page, he was definitely like, I knew there was going to be one like this. It's like a stereotypical like jazz. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but it's like what I think of when I think of like jazz art, like art that has to do with jazz. I, I, a close up of somebody playing an instrument like a saxophone with like that's like black and white with like maybe one colorful strip of something in it or I don't know this just seems like very with like that that thick border around it it just seems very uh very jazz to me so this was the very first picture I did in the sketchbook and next we have can you guess who the prompt word is head. That's why we're focusing on the head. My coworker could guess. He guessed immediately. It was really funny. He asked if this was supposed to be this person. And I was like, well, that's the person I was referencing when I, when I made the picture. <laughs> it wasn't really supposed to be him. But uh, the reference picture I used for this was Michael Jackson. <laughs> Can you see it? Can you see it? It's from the um, Smooth Criminal. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway... That's uh, that's this, and the prompt word was head. So I gave him a hat, a fun little thing, a little accessory in his silhouette. I really like this picture, actually. I like the background, and I like that scribbled silhouette. I think it, I think it turned out cool for, for being like a kind of random on a whim kind of thing. Next is back, and I like this one actually. This was one of my favorite ones in the, in the book. Um, another flapper. Stereotypical flapper, probably not period accurate, of course, but it's what you think of when you think of flapper with her little headband and her short, curled, dark hair, and you her back. And I made a really low-cut open dress so you could really see her back really well. Um, and usually dresses that are super low-cut like that have a sort of chain or weight in the back to keep it together so it doesn't, you know, fall off. So that's what this is. And then... A sort of art deco-y, I guess, kind of background. A graphic, really graphic background, like solid black and white. Uh, but yeah, so flapper, back, is the word for this one. And the next body part we have is knees. And for this one, all I could think the entire time I was drawing it was the line from the musical Chicago... From the song, All That Jazz, I want to rouge my knees and roll my stockings down. So I drew for knees, rouged knees with stockings rolled down. <laughs> because I was feeling uncreative at this point. But the only color I used was that rouge pink, that pink color. Apparently this was really a thing. I looked it up. They really did put like blush on their knees that was supposed to look, make them look healthy. I don't know. But yeah, so I, I drew some blushed knees <laughs> with a, with a little skirt that, you know, comes down that flapper, that stereotypical flapper fringe, um, a little bit of beading embellishment with the white gel pen that I don't even know if you can see on camera actually, cause it looks like it's pretty faint, but yeah. And I had to write all that jazz because it was so stuck in my head. It was painful. <laughs> After knees, we have the actual waist picture. So the, I did this after I did 
what I thought was waist before, but was actually wrist. Then I came and immediately found this page. So yeah, for waist, I actually found a screen cap from a movie. I'll see if I can find it again. Apparently they did color blocked dresses, or at least black and white blocked dresses. Um, because this really, she was wearing a dress but her waist was very accentuated because of that, that black went in so far. It was like a little tiny strip. But yeah, this is waist, that accentuated tiny waist. After waist, we have neck. It's another, just another uh, flapper, but zoomed in this time. Um, I tried to do a sort of with the white gel pen. A, it's what you would think of when uh, you think of like the Great Gatsby, that that Art Deco-y. I would have liked a metallic gold gel pen. Like that really would have been ideal. And the white, as you can see, wasn't very opaque, didn't really cover very well. But next is breasts, which again, when I was drawing this, I thought to myself, why, why? Why did you do this? You knew that you were gonna have to draw a picture to represent this word, this body part. Why? <laughs> I guess it's a good thing that my videos aren't monetized because between groin and breasts, this one might get demonetized. But anyway, so here's breasts. So the screen cap was definitely, you know, that femme fatale of the 40s-ish era opening the door for like a detective. And she had clearly thrown on some sort of a house coat or robe or something, but she had left the top undone so you could see a little more cleavage than probably was necessary, which I accentuated a bit because, you know, we're really supposed to be able to see them. That was gonna be inappropriate, let me just not. We're just first gonna go on to shoulders. This was another film noir-ish style screen cap I was looking at. Um, I actually like how this one turned out a lot. Uh, between the the sort of brick texture. It was an overgrown kind of brick wall in the background. And then her, she was wearing a really dark dress, the off the shoulder dress or top or something. I thought this was one of the better ones. Next we have cheeks and we got another gentleman playing a inst an instrument. This is obviously a trumpet. Um, this one was fun. I definitely liked this one. Um, used that pink to kind of show he was blowing a lot of air through his cheeks, you know, cause cheek. I don't know. I don't have a lot to say about these. This one was, I think this is one of the better ones as well. This was hard. There was so, I had to do so many pictures. Uh, next you have leg, which again is a flapperish kind of, kind of gal dancing with her pearls and her, her short dress, actually this is like stereotypical flapper because it's way too short for an actual flapper. But anyway, you get the idea. And now there's only two left. Next is forehead. And I ended up drawing a little kid who's like playing detective and was not paying attention and smacked his forehead directly into whatever this is. <laughs> Which kind of is mean, but I thought it was really funny when I was drawing it. So, you know, I really like this one too. But yeah, so forehead, because now he's bumped it and it's, you know, bruised or whatever. So forehead, I really like this one. I think it's really cute. Little kid so excited, you know, playing detective, looking around for stuff with his little magnifying glass and then thwack. <laughs> that meant. It makes me sound like an awful person. Anyway, and last but not, not least, we have butt, which again, this was another one like, why? But why though? Why did you decide this was a good body part to showcase? So uh, we have, you know, a lounge singer laying on a piano as, you know, as a stereotypical kind of thing. And well, she has, she has, she has a curve here. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about that, really. Uh, but yeah, this project was hard. I, I will definitely not be doing it again. If I get another sketch, well, I don't know. I can't say definitely not. But if I get another full sketchbook in one of these Scrawler Box mashups, I mean, I am glad that I had 
both boxes because having to do this all in black and white or all with just the pens and colored pencils would have been awful because the pens and colored pencils were just so hard to work with. So I'm glad at least I had more supplies to work with, but anyway. Uh, I guess like this video if you like to see me torture myself by doing 30 pictures in a month, which you know sounds like a monthly challenge, but really I sat down on like seven different days and did a bunch of them. Uh, subscribe if you are looking forward to more left brain type videos. And until next time, I will talk to all of y'all later. Bye.